Until now, we have introduced two algorithms for community detection, the govern Newman algorithm and modularity optimization. And next, let's move on to another method called spectral clustering. Remember that community detection is essentially a graph partition problem. Let's say that we have the undirected graph G with the node set B and edge set E. And in the by partitioning task we have, we want to divide the vertices into two disjoint groups A and B. For example, in this graph, uh, one of the partitioning may uh, partition this graph into two group A and B where node one, two, three is in group A and node four, five, and six are in node B. Now the question is, how can we define a good partition of the graph G? And how can we efficiently identify such a partition? For the first question, what makes a good partition? And as we mentioned before, one good partition is the one that can maximize the number of within group connections and minimize the number of between group connections. For example, if we partition, uh, partition this graph using this by cutting these two edges here, this seems like a pretty good partition. And one idea to uh, define the goodness of a partitioning is to express the partition objectives as a function of the edge cut uh, of the partition, where we define the cut as the number of edges with only one vertex in each group. Uh, for example, let's say that we have, we have this graph here, and if we partition this graph into two groups, group A and group B, and then since only these two black edges has, has one vertex in one group and the other vertex in the other group, and the cut of this partitioning is actually equal to two. Now, after we define the cut, can we simply um, define um, a good partition as a partition that can minimize the weight of connections between the groups. Basically, we define this good partition as a partition with minimal cut. Unfortunately, this is not going to work. Why? Let's say that we have this uh, we have this relatively complicated graph here, and ideally, we would want the algorithm to find this optimal cut here. However, if we define uh, the criterion as the minimal cut, the algorithm will end up end up finding the cut here. Basically, uh, the algorithm will assign this single node as one group and all the other nodes as another group, which is obviously not a very good partition. So we can see that the problem here is that um, this cut criterion, it actually only considers the external cluster connections, but it does not consider internal cluster connectivity. And to address this problem, we need a normalized cut. And normalized cut is another criterion which measures the connectivity between groups relative to the density of each group. So basically it can be computed as the sum of two terms the first term would be the, the original cut of the partitioning over the volume of group A. And here, note that this cut AB is just the original uh, cut as we defined in the previous slides. And volume of A is just the total weight of the edges with at least one endpoint in A. So basically, this is just the sum of degrees of all the nodes in group A. And similarly, the second term can be computed as uh, the original cut over the volume of group B. So why do we want to use this criterion? The reason is that compared to the original cut, this normalized cut actually produces much more balanced partitions. 
let's look at a simple example. Let's say that we have this simple graph of six nodes. And if we cut this graph here and partition, uh, partition this graph into two groups, one, one of the group is uh, node one, two, three, and the other group is uh, node four, five, and six, then the normalized cut of this partition will be one over two. But if we cut this graph here and assign, uh, assign the nodes one, two, three, four, five into one group and assign node six into the other group, then the normalized cut of this partition name will be eight over seven. So we can see that if we use the normalized cut criterion, the algorithm will definitely prefer uh, cutting the graph here rather than cutting it here. Therefore, it actually, it actually favors a more balanced cut. So the next question is how do we efficiently find a good partition? Note that the problem here is that if we use this criterion, then computing the optimal cut is actually an empty hard problem. And one idea of solving this problem is to use spectral graph partition. And remember that we already uh, define the adjacency matrix A uh, of, the, of the undirected graph G here, where the entry of the adjacency matrix A, I, J, it equals to one if the node I and J has an edge, and then it will equal to zero if they do not have an edge. And we also define X as a vector in n-dimensional with components X1 all the way to Xn. And of course, N here is the number of nodes in the graph. So we can think of, we can think of X as a label value of each node of G. And we can use the value of Xi to decide node I belongs to which group. So if, again, if Xi, equals to uh, positive one, then it belongs to group A. And if Xi equals to minus one, then it belongs to group B, something like that. So what is the meaning of A times X, where A is a matrix and X is a, a vector? So let's say that A times X equals to Y, then each element of Y, which is Yi, is actually equal to to, to the sum of n terms, where each term is just the product of I, uh, a i j times x j. So basically, this uh, this is saying that the y i is no more than the uh, the sum of labels x j of the neighbors of i. So basically, let's say that if we want to compute y three. Basically, the y corresponding to to this node, we will just uh, take the sum of all the neighbors of node three. So basically, it uh, a y three would be just x two plus x one plus x four. And remember that before we also talked about the notion of uh, eigenvalue and eigenvectors, and if a times x equals to lambda times x, where lambda is a scalar. And we say that this lambda is one of the eigenvalues of the matrix A. And the corresponding x would be the corresponding eigenvector of the matrix A. And basically, the spectral graph theory would try to analyze the spectrum of a matrix representing a graph G. And the spectrum here refers to the eigenvectors as of a graph ordered by the magnitude of their corresponding eigenvalues, lambda, F, uh, lambda i. 